Welcome to another edition of Inside the Cardinal Playbook. And Coach, it's, it's great to have a W so we can come in and talk about that. Let's talk a little bit about last Saturday and the big victory the uh, Jewel Cardinals got. Yeah, you know, it was, it was, it's always nice to, to win uh, no matter what, what game you're playing. But uh, it was nice to go seven and a half hours on the road and get a nice win. And, and it sure makes the ride home a lot easier. Well, you know, I was going over the stats. Mm -hmm. and I was looking at the huddle quite a bit mm -hmm. here before we got started. The running game was really there, you know. Uh, in football, we talk about all the different things, but if you could run the football, uh, that puts a dominance in the ball game. That it's really hard for an opposing team uh, to really get into right. the ball game because of that. Yeah, we did a nice job. You know, we've done a little bit of a roll here as of late, at least the last three weeks or so. We've been able to run the ball effectively, and and uh, you know we've got some guys back there we can hand it to, and we're being a little more physical up front, and that's helped. And and uh, so that part of it was nice, and you know equally as nice, and, and maybe as Maybe more more exciting as we had two passing touchdowns. Right. Uh, at least, yeah, two passing touchdowns and, and uh, a deep ball, a you know, 55, 60 yarder down the field from Sean to Treve, and, and it was good to see both of those hook up and, and get going. And and uh, so on both sides of it, when you can be a little more balanced there, that's that's always been our focus, you know, because of you know, maybe some injuries here and there to the receiving core and some inconsistencies there with having the same guys out there each week and. You know, Sean being beat up and playing a couple of different quarterbacks, we haven't been as efficient as we'd like to be in the passing game, you know, as our approach is to, to be more 50-50. And our run game's been good. It's nice to, to get a little bit more of a balance there on Saturday. Well, you know, we talked about it a couple of weeks ago. We ran the uh, ball well, too. I mm -hmm. think your offensive line is playing much better. Uh, but now you really, uh, and you look at your statistics from yep. last weekend, you know, you got, like you said, your three backs, you're going to have 183, 82, what, and 65 yeah. or something. You get yep. for 225. Nice spread. And then you can play action and do some of the things. Yep. I think that Sean is a good play action quarterback, mm -hmm. so it just fits into what he does. Right, he, he does. When he's healthy, he does a lot of things well, and you know he runs the ball well sometimes when he's healthy too. And that's been the thing is, you know that four, five, six game stretch in right. the middle of the season here where he hasn't been quite himself, and you know can't get on that plant foot and drive off and some different things. You know, is is uh, we've had to work our way through that, and it's nice to see him getting back more true to his his form. Well, defensively, you uh, you dominate too. You had 22 first downs to 11 for them, mm -hmm. uh, Wesleyan, and I, that's dominance up front. I've been talking about how this front seven struggled early, which yeah. I know you'll agree yep. with me, particularly in the first four ball games. Mm -hmm. I felt, but I've seen definite growth uh, the last three or four ball games from your front seven. You know, the <coughs> the big thing, as you know, uh, playing defensive football is stopping the run first, and and uh, you know, two weeks ago. Uh, you know, we give up uh, against Quincy. I think we gave up maybe 100 yards or just under 100 yards on the ground. And then, you know, last week against Kentucky Wesley, and I think we, we gave up two yards. There was they had two rushing, two to they four, two. two rushing yards, something like that, which, you know, that's when you can defend the run in that way, it allows you to do a lot of things uh, in the passing game and pressures and just different things that you can do defensively from a schematic standpoint. And, uh, you know, I think we gave up 160 some yards total. And uh, that's a pretty good day, no matter who you're playing. And so it's really you've seen the growth of our of our young defense throughout the season here, and you're really watching them come along here. I think over the last three four weeks, and you know we're looking to uh, hopefully finish strong uh, come this Saturday. Well, you look at that front seven and, and talk about encouragement for Cardinal fans in the future. I mean, we're looking at uh, redshirt freshmen and sophomores playing. Yeah, there's not a guy uh, on the defensive front right now that it's older than a sophomore that's playing significant snaps for us. And most of them, there's only there's only one that's playing snaps. Todd Hearns played some some snaps for us last week. He's a sophomore. The rest of them are redshirt freshmen, and or or true freshmen. So that's you know it's just like anything else. You've got to have you know, time on task, you know, whether you're a freshman, sophomore, junior, or senior, you have to have played the game at this level. And finally, you've seen, you know, Austin Doss and Todd, or excuse me, uh, uh, Robert Hurd over the last few weeks, you know, as their play count for the season gets up over 500 as a defensive lineman, now they become a sophomore. And or even going maybe into their junior year just for, because of their play count. So that time on task, you see them start to start to evolve a little bit into more of a mature player and 
and that's helped us uh, defensively, uh, you know, with everybody. Well, that answers my question. Like I said, the first four or five weeks we've struggled, and yep. you see a definite improvement. Yeah. And, and, uh, you we, know, knew it was, we knew there was going to and you know this from, from being around, especially on the defensive side for a long time, those aren't something that you can will a kid to do. No. You know, as a young player, hey, we, we want you to do this. Well, he wants to do it. It's just his ability to understand it, see it, process it quickly enough, and to actually physically carry it out. Uh, is what you've got to have time on task for. Well, those kids are going to be a lot more uh, uh, physically mm -hmm. apt uh, next two years because they're going to put you get in the weight room and, and start uh, eating that iron. Right, right. And it's going to make a big difference. It's nice to to know that that uh, you know pretty much the whole defensive line, the the majority, the large majority of the defensive line, and the in the linebackers even are going to be around for you know two, three, four more years. Yeah, the, the future looks good, particularly with the front seven uh, defensively. We'll come back with the next segment. We can talk a little bit about our players of the week. If y'all going to be great on that field, you got to have a why. you got to have a reason for why you do what you do. How about to come here and blame y'all? Follow my lead, baby, and we're going to win this thing. Why? Why do you wake up in the morning? Why do you put on that jersey? Why do you go out and practice? I ain't bothered with this opportunity. Before the game or after the game, it's Poor Boy Oil Company for your pre- and post-game food and beverage. ConocoPhillips and BP Amico Fuels get you to the game, and our large vendors give you great food and beverage choices before or after the game. Our small town roots and family value philosophies help us to maintain the highest standards in customer service and value. Poor Boy Oil Company. Find us around the Northland, wherever the Cardinals fly. Cardinal fans, welcome back to the second segment of Inside the Cardinal Playbook. And we're going to talk a little bit and kick it off here with a small offense in this segment. Mm -hmm. And let's talk about our receivers. We had a good week, a yeah. uh, uh, great game uh, several guys did against West. Yeah. And let's talk about those guys. You know, again, and it's nice to you kind of see Sean coming back into, you know, what we've come to expect it, uh, from him over the last three or four years. And that, you know, we had a lot of guys with multiple receptions on Saturday. Uh, he spread the ball. I, I think we had four guys with at least three catches. You did, and uh, so that's you know that tells me that he's throwing to the open guy, and, and there's guys getting open and they're catching it. You know we haven't we haven't been as efficient as we'd like to be in the passing game this year. And again, we talked about it earlier. It, that that stems from a lot of different things, whether it's you know injuries in the receiving core and and uh, injuries at the quarterback position, some injuries on the offensive line, whatever they might be. We haven't been near as consistent. As we'd like to be there, and it was nice to see us, you know, be be very efficient in the passing game for the most part on Saturday. I think we were 17 for 25 for two touchdowns, and and uh, spread the ball around really well. And you know, it's it's great to see those guys in there and, and starting to uh, to get that part of our game back. Well, let's clarify though for Cardinal fans. You know, stretching the field sounds like a real simple task. Uh, why don't we talk about yeah. some of the things that got to take place in order for you to stretch the field? Yeah. Uh, you know, I've I've heard that some mm -hmm. obviously. And but you have to have time. Yep. You have to establish the run where you would keep the safeties where they the yep. honor the run, yep. so you got an opportunity to stretch the mm -hmm. field. Talk about some of that stuff. Yeah, you know, it's it's. I wish it was as easy. Yeah. Just, hey, just throw it, throw, throw it, throw it as far it. as you can, and yeah. Yeah, you run down there, you throw as far as you can. Backyard. Unfortunately, ball. those guys on the other side, you know, that's what they're taught to defend against, and so you've got to be creative in how you do it. And you know, the biggest part of it is, you know, you you you're you're crazy if you do those things and you can't protect the quarterback. And uh, that's, you know, it's been a big thing for us is we're, right now, we're leading the conference in not giving up sacks. We're number one in the conference about, you know, not giving up sacks. And part of that is we've, we've because of our, some injury situations, we've, we've ran it more as of late. Uh, you know, part of it is because we've, we've spent some more time on the underneath passing game and, and some of those things. But, but uh, you know, to be able to throw the ball down the field, a lot of things have to come together. You've got to have tremendous timing uh, with the quarterback and receivers on routes, and you've got to obviously in, in your protection schemes be able to handle anything the defense can throw at you from a pressure uh, package because it takes time to get the ball to that level of the coverage. And and uh, so you know that's something we we continue to work on. It was great. It was great to see. As I, I was as excited as I've I've been all year on Saturday when we cre completed a ball down the field for that 60-yard touchdown, right. that throwing catch from Sean to Trevay. 
you know, I was I was ecstatic because that's that's something we've been grinding on, working on to to, uh, to to try and stretch the field a little bit more, and we connected on one, and it was it was great to see. So, you know, hopefully that's a sign of, of good things to come for us in the future. Uh, especially teams talking about that, and uh, you know, we it seems like uh, the last three weeks there's been a different area. Especially teams that's kind of sh you came yeah, up and kind of stung us a little bit. You know, two weeks ago our kickoff coverage was tremendous, and uh, last week we struggled on kickoff. Now they had on kickoff coverage we struggled. They had a couple kickoff returners that were good players, and and they've they've you know got after everybody they've played in the conference, and and. Uh, you know, so that was frustrating, you know, just, you know, we had some guys out of lanes and we need to, we need to run harder. There's a lot of things that we need to get corrected, you know, but it hasn't been the same each week. And that's the crazy thing is, you know, as, as I was talking to, to Rick before the game and our pregame talk is, you know, we're still striving for, as we all do in this game, we're striving for that complete game. You bet. Offense, all three phases. defense, and special teams. I talk about to start the game all yeah, the time. Yeah, that's, that is the pinnacle of what yes, we do is. this for as players and coaches is to be able to execute in all of those three areas and be efficient in all of those three areas. We had some letdowns on the, on the kickoff return, uh, excuse me, on kickoff on Saturday, which we're, we'll work really hard at this week to get corrected. And, again, that's been one of our strengths. Uh, punt, we... We punt and covered fairly well. Uh, we we uh, had a bad snap uh, on one of the punts and got it blocked. That was that was a frustrating thing. But on the other side of it, we blocked a punt for a safety and uh, almost had another one. And so those things, anytime you can, you know, score in the kicking game uh, on blocks like that, it were huge. You know, credit a lot of things as you know on the coverage units. There's a lot of defensive players on kickoff and punt. You know, those we had three series in the first half where we they started plus 30 uh, on the plus 30 side of the field, meaning they only had 30 yards to go right. to to get a touchdown, and uh, not one of those ended in a touch. Not one of those ended in a score. Uh, we get off the field on the fourth down, the first and miss a field goal on the second, and they go for it. I think we get off the field on the fourth down on the third situation. But you know, as we preach to the defensive players, you know, as we go through the film from Saturday, is hey. You're the ones making it hard on yourself you here, uh, because you know, I, you know, there's I think out of the ten cover guys, not counting the kicker, there's eight defensive players uh, on that unit, and uh, so we've got to do a better job of not making it so difficult on ourselves, and uh, so that they've been challenged, and, and you know, I have every you know trust in them that they'll rise to the challenge this week, and we'll we'll do a heck of a lot better job there, and we need to. Well, you know. I in high school football, when I mean, you get in the playoffs, you have a tendency to load your especially teams up with front line guys because mm -hmm. that's the real time. Yep. A lot of time during the regular season, you think, uh, sometimes we thought we could get by with letting kids get opportunity right. to play. What's your philosophy on that? You know, we play on a. We've got a lot of starters on our coverage units, and really in special teams in general. Uh, you know, our philosophy is and where we are at in our program. You know, we've got to play our best players. You know, no matter what the situation, we've got guys, you know, Jack Bissonette's playing. You know, I think the only thing, the only thing he is not on is kickoff return. You know, he's on, he's, he's been on punt, he's on punt block, he's on kickoff, he's on, you know, so playing our front line guys in those, in those situations, I think, you know, you got Nate, uh, our receiver, you know, he's on, I don't know that there's a, a special team he's not on. He's not on kickoff, I guess, but he's on the other three and, so, you know, Glenn Whitney's on kickoff, and he's mm -hmm. on all these things that, that uh, those frontline guys need to be on because, you know, and, and that's, you know, in my opinion, why we've had success in that area of the game, you know, consistent success over the last three years. And, you know, we've talked about some, <clears throat> some frustrating things the last couple of weeks in some of those areas. But, you know, but our, our body of work says that's something we've put a lot of focus on and it's paid off. And so, you know, whether that's the right philosophy or not, you know, that's, that's the one we've taken up to this point, and I don't see it changing a whole lot. Well, Cardinal fans, we'll come back, and believe it or not, we will talk about the players of the week uh, coming up. Uh, we got to be carried away there with offense, yeah. especially teams. But I, I had to ask you that question. Yeah. I thought it was interesting. But we'll get back in the yeah, third segment in Inside the Cardinal Playbook.
Manners is new to Liberty, just south of the Highway 152 and I-35 intersection. They're open Sunday through Tuesday from 11 a.m. until midnight and Wednesday through Saturday from 11 until 1.30 a.m. Come in any day for food specials in the spacious dining area. Happy hour specials are served from two spots in the building and the service is fast and friendly. Tanners of Liberty, just south of the Highway 152 and I-35 intersection. Cardinal fans, welcome back to Inside the Cardinal Playbook. And Coach, this segment we're going to talk about our Players of the Week. It's always great to have a W yeah. because your philosophy is that we have Players of the Week when we have W, and I enjoy that. Uh, there's a lot of kids that I really do see. Before you get started, I see a lot of kids really improving. The first segment we talked about the front seven yep. defensively, which I, that's where I have most of my expertise, yeah. and I see that growth. <laughs> So, uh, why don't you talk a little bit about the guys that uh, are in their stripes this week here at William Joe College? You know, as it's, it's, we just got done talking to the players, you know, it's always nice to, to, have, to have the opportunity to talk about uh, players of the week because that means we, we're coming off a nice win. And, and uh, you know, anytime you, you have nominations, we vote them as coaches. You know, when we have multiple nominations, that's a good thing. So, you know, this week as we talk about uh, the, the young players in our program that we don't get to see on Saturdays except maybe at home games on the sideline, you know, in, in street clothes or, or those type of things, is you know, those guys that are out there making us better each week in practice that we'll, we'll know their names here before in, in the real near future. Uh, on the offensive work team, that means working against the defense. And he actually has traveled with us a couple of different times as our third quarterback this year is Nick West, a quarterback out of the Dallas area that, that uh, redshirted for us last year, and this is in his redshirt freshman year, and and uh, we'll get a chance to, I'm sure, see a lot here in the not so distant future. Uh, did a nice job for us all year all year long, and we honored him this week with with the uh, offensive work team player of the week, and uh, defensively, uh, a defensive back out of Dallas area uh, by the name of Parker Wood, uh, who you're really going to like, a, a bigger physical safety that's redshirting for us this year. Made some nice plays and gives good effort every day and made some nice plays last week. That uh, was our defensive work team player of the week. Um, as far as guys from Saturday, you know, special teams, you know, it's always nice when you have some different guys to look at there. Chris Smith did some nice things in the return game as he continues to do he's, there. He's, and, yeah, he's really you know, well. <laughs> We had some areas where we did some good things. Uh, in the kicking game, you know, any time you can score in the kicking game, it's huge. And, and we had one of those, Nate, uh, our receiver, Nate, uh, blocked a punt, and uh, you know we ended up it ended up rolling out of the side of the end zone for a safety, and you know had a chance to maybe block another one, but that was a big play in the football game as they always are and block punts for scores. Uh, and then you know offensively, a lot of guys we could have looked at. We talked about how how our running games you know done some really good things. We talked about some guys in the passing game uh, on Saturday that caught the ball well and ran for it, and we had some scoring plays in the passing game. You know, and the guy we went with this week, and is is we start to see him come back into being healthy, and in the, in the player that, that we've all known him to be is Sean Shelton. He accounted for three touchdowns himself, two in the air, and and rush for another, and and uh, it was nice to see that from him. He was our offensive uh, player of the week, and then defensively we went with um, again uh, several different options there. As you talk about the front seven, you know the main nominees were in the front seven again this week. Uh, you know, and a couple guys on the defensive line, and Austin Doss and Robert Hurd continue to, you know, have, see growth from them and their play. And and uh, there were some guys, you know, around the perimeter did some good things. You know, we went with Nick Messer, uh, who did some, you know, had had some nice plays in the run game. And then, well, coach, you just told me though that he's just tied for the conference lead as he, a linebacker for is, interceptions. Talk about lead, that a little bit. As of as of this week, he's leading the conference That's on amazing. interceptions per game. I think. You know, he's got four on the year. I think that's tied for fourth, but he missed the game earlier. So his his interceptions per game average mm -hmm. is the highest in the conference right now. And, you know, for a, for a linebacker, that's uh, that's, that's, a, that's quite a deal. And, you know, in our schemes and the things we allow him to do, if he was sitting here with us right now, he'd, he'd probably be shaking his head because he knows there was at least three more, if not four more, that, that he feels like he should have had. Uh, then he could have just blown it out of the water from, uh, from winning the uh, – conference interception award but but uh, he's doing some really good things and continues to grow for us at our Mike linebacker position and you know that's only a sophomore a true sophomore and and uh, he's got an extremely bright future as, as they all do which we're excited about you bet you know you mentioned Sean too and of course you know I've gotten close to him yeah. through the years I, I really feel like uh, 
you know, a healthy shine, and you're looking at a whole different ball of wax for the entire season. I told his dad in our last uh, coaches show here at yeah. Tanner's, you know, I've gotten close to the family. I really think that uh, it, it's really a shame because his senior year, I know how much he's put yeah. into this program, uh, and it is good to see him get that player. You, you know, uh, we've, we've come to expect a lot of things from him, you know, as we, we should, you know, have him being a four, having him being a four-year starter now. You know, it's frustrating for him and, you know, for, for the team as well. It's, it's nobody's fault. It's one of those things that happen in our game. He gets injured in, in week three and really, you know, misses a couple games and misses half of several games, and we really don't have him healthy until now, uh, back healthy again. And so there's a, you know, five, six-game stretch there in the middle where, you know, we're, we're not quite who we could be. You know, we... We built our team around this year, you know, his abilities and some of those things. And DJ came in and, and done, did a, yeah, did a really good job. Yeah, I don't want to slice DJ at all. No, he's done a really he's good job. He's done some really good things. But, uh, you know, we build ourselves around. You always build yourself as, mm -hmm. as every team in college football. You deal with the Chiefs a lot. They're, they built their offense around what their quarterback can, their right. starting quarterback can do. And, and uh, you know, next year we may have a little different look to us with, with DJ and some of those other guys in there. And, you know, that's just the way it goes. But. Those are those are harder things to tweak and, and change mid-season, but sure is nice and, and a whole lot more comforting to get uh, to get that consistency of playback from from uh, our quarterback position. Well, it's really great to have the players of the week get those kids' names in there and all yeah. the hard work. I really want to commend you and your staff. I think it's great that you have your scout team kids uh, uh, get some credit because they put in a lot of time there. You, you know how it is. There's there's. You know, forty four the other thirty forty other ones that I'd love to sit here and talk about. And we'll, we will at some point. You, you know, been? we always talk about recruiting and, and some names that we all heard in recruiting when we had those shows. But but uh, those guys are can't say enough about what they do uh, for making our team better, and uh, they don't get near enough credit. Well, that'll in this segment of Inside the Cardinal Playbook. We're going to come uh, back with the final segment, and we're going to talk a little bit about our upcoming game. It's going to be at noon uh, in, in St. Joe. Um, they're they're seven and three, I believe now. Yep. The conference are a fine football team. We're going to talk to them in our next about them in our next segment. My name is Jesse Limekuler, CEO of Belvoir Winery. The goal of the winery is to serve Liberty as best we can to make it a, a destination for people to come to Liberty. There's a lot to see as far as the history goes, from the Odd Fellows to the other buildings that are available on the property. And then also it's a business in the sense we do a lot of events, baby showers, wedding showers, anniversaries, birthdays, and weddings. We're open seven days a week, 11 to 4 Monday through Wednesday, 11 to 8 Thursday through Saturday, and 12 to 6 on Sunday. Belvoir Winery, 110 years in the making. Sometimes happy marriages fall apart, and divorce is the only way out. At a time like this, you need an attorney who will listen to you and will work for you. I'm Stephanie Shutt and I understand that divorce can be hard for anyone and I know the importance of a fair settlement. The decisions that are made now will affect the future happiness and well-being of you and your family. At Costello and Farah, we will fight for you. Call or visit 505 Help and let me help you. Cardinal fans, welcome back to the last segment today of Inside the Cardinal Playbook. We're going to talk about our upcoming game this Saturday at noon uh, against St. Joe, a 7-3 ball club uh, conference team that's just pretty darn good. Yeah, you know they've uh, they've they've done some good things this year. You know they 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 had a, a schedule early on and they got got on a little bit of a roll and got some nice wins early and and uh, just kind of you know stayed on that track. Uh, you know I think they've had they've got two losses in the conference now. S and T beat them. Maybe 14, 13. Yeah, I think it was. Maybe a couple well, weeks before we played yeah. them or something like that. And, you know, they get a nice win on the road last week against Truman State, 6-3, to three, which is... Somebody a, got the curveball up and hit a three-run home run. Yeah, it's a great, you know, three field goals. And, and those two teams, that yeah. that wouldn't be something you would expect. And, you know, you know, talking to, you know, some of the coaches involved in that game, there was some, you know, some sloppy play and some different things. And the wind was blowing and all those things. But it was interesting when I saw that score. I You know, yeah. I, I had to look a couple times to make sure it wasn't a misprint but but no they're doing some really good things they're doing some really good things they're, th they're scoring points on offense and they've got one of the better defenses in our conference they've been real solid i've been watching you know they the have different things and then they're they're yeah. solid defense they've uh you know as we watched them last year you remember the game from last year that was that was a whole different dynamic mm -hmm. of a game here as it was a scoring fest and i think you know thomas cook went for 400 and some all-purpose yards mm -hmm. in that game and their quarterback went for some you know, record-breaking numbers last year here. You know, so there's a big points scored. 
And then, you know, now they're defensively, you know, they're almost on the other end of the spectrum. They're only giving up, you know, under 20 points a game and <clears throat> defending. I think they might be the best in the conference at defending the run statistically. And uh, so they're doing some really good things, you know, in, in all phases right now. And, you know, that's a that's not an easy place to go play. You know, they uh, been there and done that. Yeah, I they're. You I know, remember we, we got a win there last time we tried. We did. There. We're we're one and zero there right now. We're right. hoping we can make it two and zero. But that's a that's a tough place to play. And you know, they're in their home environment. And you know, it's the first time this year we'll have played on a grass surface. And uh, you know, late in the season, those can get a little bit chewed up. And we've had a lot of rain games and different things like that throughout this season. So, you know, we're going to have to go go in there and overcome those adversities. Uh, you know, and then obviously the the big adversity that we're gonna we're gonna have is just as well as they're playing right now and the confidence that they're playing with. Well, you know, uh, just real quickly explain to Cardinal fans uh, about how Division Two uh, teams qualify to move on to the playoffs. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I think a lot of people ha really do not know how that works. Yeah, you know, it's a it. You know, some people say it's a better process than what the Division One schools currently have now. I know next year they're going to the Division One schools are going to a playoff system. Uh, the BCS schools uh, going to a playoff system where there'll be a fourteen playoff. You know, Division Two structure along with the uh, you know the bowl championship series Division One schools. We have a playoff system, and you know there's there's four different regions in Division Two, in the top. Six ranked teams at the end of the at the end of the regular season in each region are the ones that make the playoffs. So there's there's regional rankings that that start coming out about halfway through the year and and uh, it's kind of where you fall in those regional rankings that de you know, depends on whether you make the playoffs or not. Right now, you know the teams in our conference, University of Indianapolis, is in the top six in the, in the region in our region, along with some teams from the Lone Star Conference and you know I'm not sure about some of the other conferences right now, but but uh, yeah it's don't just take anybody and uh, it's, it's a tough deal to get into and so really it's made up of, of a 24 team bracket so you can be in the top 25 and still not make the playoffs. Well Lily, I know this is a tough time for you a little bit too because this is the last game that the seniors will play you'll be playing on mm -hmm. the road um, you know you, you do reflect I don't care what who you are and what <laughs> level you coach at when your kids move on yeah uh, in your case, they move on, and most of them will move on and uh, really go on with their life and uh, begin mm -hmm. their life as far as their jobs, right. their, you know, their families, that type of mm -hmm. thing. I know uh, we got about a minute and a half here. I want you to talk a little bit about some of your uh, some of your seniors real quickly. Yeah, this is always an emotional game because y you know, walking out there, that you're walking out with a crew that that uh, this will be the last time you walk out with some of them, and uh, that's a that's a hard thing to swallow for everybody involved and especially the players and, and as coaches you get so attached to them as, as players and individuals you know me more importantly probably than players as them as an individual and and uh, you know that relationship that's been consistent since you started recruiting them over the last you know four years that relationship changes and it changes because not because you feel any different about them it's just because you don't see them near as often you're not in the same environments anymore and and uh, so, you know, those those things are hard to know that, that that's the last time you get to do that with, with those guys that are going to be seniors for us. And, you know, the, the thing that I hope for, for all of us is that we, we give our best efforts, and I know we will as a team, and, and that we, we can finish it on a, on a victory note because that, you know, thinking back to my senior season, we didn't have a great season. And, uh, you know, I played for a guy by the name of Jerry Kill who, went on to do some really good things in his career and coaching the Big Ten now. But, you know, we won our last game, and that was a big deal uh, about feeling good. And, you know, you probably remember this from your last game, the emotion of it. Yep. You know, it, whether you win or you lose, for those players that that's their last game on Saturday, you know, 99% of them are still going to cry. And uh, there's just a lot, of, a lot of time and energy put into this game and the relationships that involve. It is a hard game. You put your heart and soul into it, no yeah. matter what level you've coached yeah. at, and when you when you've done it, uh, you got to respect those kids. And I really want to, as a fan yeah. and a guy that got the opportunity to do the games here at William Jewell, mm -hmm. I really want to say a big thank you. And I know Rick feels the same yeah. way I do for the kids that have been in your program, the seniors and their parents. And uh, you know, let's hopefully we'll go over to St. Joe at noon and uh, finish this thing out strong. Coach, That's good nice. luck to you and and the Cardinals. And uh, hopefully, uh, all Cardinal fans, uh, you could pick. Uh, uh, Rick up uh, on the internet uh, over at St. Joe and it will be a 12 o'clock start. So that's this edition of Inside the Cardinal Playbook.